In the name of the living and loving God, who is Creator, Christ, and Holy Spirit. I'll have to confess, I lose my place every time I read that crazy story about the seven brothers. Wow. I'll say more about that later. But first of all, I want to say something about Saturday a week ago, which I made an announcement about yesterday, I mean last week. Um, the prayer walk that Common Threads did, First Baptist and St. James, the, piece, the, the group that I was with, um, stuck sort of this area. And, um, and we sang a song. We sang a song as we walked around praying for the people of this community. It goes like this. I want Jesus to walk with me. I want Jesus to walk with me. All along my pilgrimage journey, I want Jesus to walk with me. And that song and that experience is really about finding God, finding Jesus in our daily lives. It's a wonderful song. And it's all about, it's all about finding God in our daily lives. And the interesting thing is that the four scriptures for today, each one of them in a different way talks about the same thing. Finding God in our daily lives. St. Paul is famous for talking and calling that activity, finding God in our daily lives, finding Christ in our, as, as coming alive in Christ, living in Christ. That's what we're talking about here. And sometimes being more aware of God in our daily lives is, takes place by choice and perseverance. And that goes to the reading from Job. Well, it, the, the, the experience of Job, the challenge of Job's life is not so much included in the quote which you hear today, but you know the story of Job. I mean, he lost family and friends. He lost health. He lost money. I mean, one thing after another. And the friends that he did have said, you know, give it up. I mean, don't, why is, how can you believe in a God that treats you like this? But, but he chose he chose, for I know that my Redeemer, Redeemer lives. I shall see God, and my eyes shall behold, and not, an, uh, not another. Job chose to believe in God, and he persevered. So, we make choices. It might be choices about how we practice ministry, or how we practice prayer or how we relate to people. We can choose how to do that, and we can choose to make the way we do that be based on the life of Jesus. And we hang in there. There are times when we endure trials. All of us have been through that, and we had a cho choice of bailing or hanging in there, being enduring. That's, that's a way in which we can include God in our daily lives by staying true to what God has called us to do. So sometimes being aware of God in our daily lives happens through choice or perseverance. Sometimes discovering and including God, being more aware of God in our daily lives happens through a personal plea, like in Psalm 17 which we just sang. I call upon you, O God, for you will answer me. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. There are a lot of psalms that speak like that, calling on God to, to help me. I'm in trouble here. To come and guide me, to hold me up, to redeem me. And so we ask for guidance. We ask for guidance when we feel lost, 
I told the story that I asked for guidance when I thought I was going to um, fail chemistry in college, and God did not come help me. <laughs> so it wasn't really a prayer. It was just a fleeting thought. But, but we have, I have asked God to come and help me for serious things. And yes, it does happen. That's a way to invite God into the troubles of our life or into the joys of our lives. That's a way we can experience and include God in our lives. And that's what it's all about. Sometimes we include or become more aware of God in our daily lives through relationships. Maybe some relationships in the pews right now. Or relationships with strangers. Or relationships with people we only listen to but don't engage, who have wisdom to give to us. Because remember, Jesus said, love one another. Um, in 2 Thessalonians, that's, that is one of the letters of Paul, um, in this whole, he's always, in every lesson, he, he, in every letter he writes, he's encouraging people to love one another, to be good, to act right, you know, to respect each other. He's really, even though he is a, clearly the first theologian of Christianity, but he's also uh, pastoral. And, and really encouraging those communities to thrive and to live into the principles of Jesus. And, and so we hear, he talked, he's talking in this one um, of today of being gathered together, telling those Second Thessalonians, you know, you've gotten a little lazy, you need to pick up your game, you know, but, but, but be good to each other and respect each other and look out for those who need your help. That's God's work. Finally, sometimes... Being more aware of God is found through discerning wisdom, insight, and knowledge. You know, God, we experience God through our hearts, but our thinking is a part of it as well. And in this story about the Sadducees and the Pharisees, uh, Jesus concludes this pa that passage with this line. Now he is God, not of the dead, but of the living, for to him all of them are alive. And that needs some explanation. Yes, the Sadducees and the Pharisees were at odds with each other, being two parties within the religion of Judaism. And as I said here, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection. Of course, we're not talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Here we're talking about the resurrection at the end of time when the Messiah does come. That was a piece of, of Judaism that the Pharisees believed in, the Sadducees did not. Also, the Sadducees, the Sadducees actually only believed in scripture of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, the Moses tract. Um, but the Pharisees believed in the prophets and other scriptural passages. So they were at odds with each other. They didn't agree with each other. And of course the Sadducees are trying to trick Jesus. Instead of Jesus being sucked into some sort of stupid uh, argument, he lets them talk and he gives an answer. But his final answer is in that line. For God is God not of the dead but of the living. For to him all of them are alive. All of them dead and living are alive. Believing in this or not believing in that. All of them in him are alive. Sometimes we really do make progress in our journey in faith by understanding. And at the same time, one of the greatest pieces of wisdom in our faith is that God loves everybody. So maybe we should too in our daily lives. We meditate on words, we meditate on passages, we contemplate, we hold those passages in our hearts and in our minds, <laughs> and we literally wait for God to guide us into a better understanding of facts of our faith that challenge us. <laughs> and God will help us. In fact, God wants to be a part of that process in our faith journeys. So here's, here's the wonderful two-line complementary 
<laughs> that I feel about this whole thing. I want Jesus to walk with me all along my pilgrim journey. When we experience Jesus walking with us, we are actually walking with Jesus. Don't you like that? I mean, walking, for us to walk with Jesus includes in a, you know, a choice for us. But when we ask Jesus to walk with us, we are walking with Jesus. It is asking us to walk with us and therefore help shape us and guide us and lead us. When we ask Jesus to walk with us, which is what Jesus, God, wants to do, we are walking with Jesus. So here's my question for your reflection. How do you want to walk with Jesus today? This is a good start. How do you want to walk with Jesus today? Amen.